Hello! So today we're just going to make a little quick mini album. I'm going to show you the sample. It's not decorated or anything, but this is what it looks like. It opens like this. And then those pull out. I saw this on Pinterest and I thought I would give it a try. So we're going to go ahead and make one like this. So to start off, you're going to need two pieces of paper. Well, this is one sheet actually, and it's cut in half the long way. And so it's cut to four and a quarter by 11. And we're gonna score it at three and a quarter and six and a half. And then I'm just gonna bring this over here to the three and a quarter mark and score it at six and a half again. Okay. So essentially it's three and a quarter, three and a quarter, three and a quarter, and then that's your leftover. That's what we're going to attach to the book. Okay. So again, three and a quarter, six and a half, and then I'm just going to bring this little score mark over here just because I don't want to get out my big scoreboard. So I'm just going to make do with what I have. It's a little too hard to put it up here when I'm using my phone to film. So we're just going to be okay with this one for now. Then we're going to fold this um, like you're folding a fan way back when you were in school, just back and forth on itself. And then crease all those folds really well. Okay. So that's what you have there. You're going to do the same thing with this one. Fold it back and forth on itself. Just like that. And then crease all the folds. I found it works better to fold it all together lightly and then crease them together and then they line up a little bit better. So then there's our second one. Then I'm going to round the corners here. And that's not necessary, obviously. You can just keep them straight if you prefer that way. Okay. They're all rounded. I'm going to set those aside for a minute. And then I'm going to get a piece of paper that is... 11 inches long by six and just it's one eighth mark over the half inch so it's six and a half plus one eighth of an inch mark so on your scoreboard you're just gonna go let's see here to the six and a half and then you're just gonna go one mark over and that's where you're gonna cut it that's just to help it um, fit these two pieces together without them interfering with each other when you open them up because you're going to put them side by side like this. Okay. All right. Then you're going to put this piece in here with the 11 side along the top. And I'm going to score this at four. And four and one quarter. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it around. And the easiest way to find this measurement is to find how this is going to be the top, the bottom of my fold up. And then all you have to do is put your pieces in there. 
see how much you want to go over it. So mine is going to be at two and one, two, three eighths. And then at two and one eighth, I'm going to make another score mark. So there we go. Okay. This is going to be my top. This is going to be my bottom. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to round my top corners here, just like that. And then I'm going to crease all of my folds. And then you can see that we're going to have the one, uh, one quarter, um, a quarter of an inch of space inside to have for these little booklets and anything else that you put inside. Okay. So that's what we have there. And then it looks like that. What we're going to do now is I want to customize mine a little bit more. There are a lot of ways that you can customize it. What I'm going to do is put a pocket down here. You could put a pocket here that these guys cover up. You could switch this up and make this your top and put two pockets up here if you wanted to. There's a lot of ways that you could change this up to be something that you want. But for me, I'm going to just put a pocket. So I've cut this piece here to the size of this. And then I added a half an inch to each side and then a half an inch to the long side to however much I wanted. So my piece is, I don't even know. Let's, where's my ruler? Here we go. My piece is seven and three quarters long. And it's three inches there. And then I just scored it at a half an inch on three sides. You may need to change up. I didn't take a measurement when I did this. All I did was put a pencil mark on my, cut my piece of paper to the height that I wanted it, and then I put a pencil mark where I wanted to score it. Okay. Then we're just going to crease all of those folds like that. And then this guy is just going to go right there. Now, before we stick it on, we want to go ahead, we're going to put, you want to figure out what kind of closure you want to put on it. Um, some of the ones I saw had a magnet closure. Some of them had a brad that you wrapped around. So you want to figure that out first. I think... I think for mine, I'm going to go ahead and use a, whoops, I'm going to go ahead and use a magnet. There we go. So I'm going to stick one on the back of here. And I'm gonna hold it down with a little bit of washi. Don't 
Doesn't really matter what kind. It's going to be hidden by the pattern paper anyways. And even though I'm going to put a pocket over this, you really want to make sure that you put, if you're going to cover this with pattern paper, because this could interfere with the sliding of your tag, what you're going to put in there. Okay, and you don't want to do that. There's my other one. There we go. So we're going to stick that guy right about there. That works out good. There we go. Okay. So now all we have to do is attach our little pocket. There we go. And then our thing can close up nicely. And you could also have the option if you wanted to um, it's going to bug me. Mine is just a hair bigger than my actual paper. So it hangs off there. Just gonna try to adjust the fold just a little tiny bit because it just hangs off just a little. There we go. There. Now let's see if that's better. Good. Okay. There we go. So now you've got your pocket on. If you want to, you can round these. I think for mine, I'm going to leave them square. Now we're going to take our, um, our fold outs and you would do this part. If you're going to put a pocket on here, do this part first so that these are hidden. And then I like to turn it this way so that I can line it up and put the right amount of space on the top and on the bottom. And then you just want to line it up right with the edge of the book, but not over the edge of the book. Okay. And then same thing for this one. I'm just going to put your adhesive on there. And again, we're going to turn it around. And line it up right with the edge of the book. And then also this time making sure that it lines up with that piece there. Okay. All right. And then there you go. You open it like that. Mine, this one may have ended up with a little bit of a bigger space. This one has no space in between. They're right there. That's kind of more of what you want to go for. So if that happens to you, you could just open them up, slide them over just a little bit. And then if you want to, you could trim the end if you haven't put on your bottom pocket like I did already. Or you can just have the extra space on the side. I'm just moving both of mine over just a hair and then I'll just have a little bit of space on the side. 
Well, you're getting to see a lot of errors today. There we go. There. I'm a little more happy with that. That looks good. And then it opens like that, and it opens like that. And then this is where, if you wanted to, you could put a pocket. That would look really cool. Or um, you could just put pattern paper there, too. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could do with this. Um, with this particular... Now, all I'm going to do for this one, I have mine put together then, essentially. So now I'm just going to decorate it. And what I want to do is I'm just going to make a little pencil mark. And I want to cut that one. And the piece I'm going to put on the lid at the same time. Or the piece I'm going to put on the top part of the cover at the same time. There we go. Alrighty. And then I know that my bottom is four inches, so I'm going to cut this to three and seven eighths. And I know that my top one is two and one eighth, so I'm going to cut this to two. Alright. Whoops. And then we can just set that aside for now. Okay. And then all we want to do is take this piece and we're just going to attach it here. If it is a directional piece, remember that it's going to be seen in this manner. So just keep, you know, keep track of that. All right. And then for this piece, I need to round the corners because I rounded the corners of the top piece there. Okay. And then this guy is just going to fit right on there like that. And I'll open it up. Press really well. And then there we have that. That looks good. Okay. Then let's find a piece for, nope, well, that actually works out good. We'll put this piece on there. just going to stick right in here. Now the benefit of putting the pocket on before you start, before you put the pocket on, because you could easily put this on first, but then if you put this on first, then when, or if you put this on second, when you open up your pocket, you won't be able to see those tabs. If you put the pattern paper on first, you will see the tabs that attach it, this pattern paper tends to hide that. And this will also keep it from sticking on the magnet, which is why I made it the whole size. Normally, if I was going to line a pocket, I would have made it just enough to fit inside the pocket and, you know, cover down, but I made this one the whole size because I want it to cover 
where we put the magnet. Okay, and then since I'm going with the theme here, I think I'll take this guy and put him right there. And then my bottom will match my covers. And that will be kind of cool. Alrighty. My pencil mark. And then I'm also going to cut this one to two because I'm going to put this up there. And whoops, I cut the wrong end of it. My bad. All right, well, let's cut this one then. Okay. All right. We'll stick this guy right here. Just like so. And then our pocket is done. And then we'll take this one. And he's going to go on the top. All right. Lines up perfectly. There we go. Our book is coming along nicely. All right. So now let's open this up and let's do this piece. And let's do this one with, let's bring in a little bit of a darker color now. Just because, no, I don't have any darker colors in it, so I don't want to do that. How about... How about this piece? I don't really love that one. It's sort of gives it a theme then and we don't want that none of the the papers do have a theme but none of the ones that I chose oh, except this one have a theme have the same oh and we have this one here but that's okay let's put these on first and then we'll see now I cut all of these to four and one eighth by three and one eighth and then what that's going to do is allow me to put a four by three picture on this and you will still see the um, the page or you will still see the pattern paper. You'll have an eighth of an inch around both. You can very easily skip matting these if you don't want to do the pattern paper. If you just want the picture on it that would save space in there as well. And then around these corners and we find, yep, I like that good for the front. I did want my front to, to match, even though the picture that you put on there will not be the same. I decided that that's what I wanted for them. It might be kind of cool though, to for the front page, if you have a picture that can be divided easily, if you have a four by six photo that can be divided pretty easily. It might look really cool to divide it in half, if it can be divided in half, and then you would have two four by three photos, and that would look really cool for this front picture. It would 
keep it very um I don't know the word that I'm trying to say, so I'll just stop there. Then we'll put those two there like that. That looks pretty good. Okay. Sorry about my dogs. that one depends on what we want to put there so let's put this guy there and there yeah that looks good That looks good. Okay. And then same thing here. We're going to do this one and that one. Okay. Here. And here. Alrighty, then we just have this last one here to do, and we're going to do these two. We just have to find one for this little middle section here and then we've got all of our sections and then you can put photos in here this would hold four by six photos really well it would hold um, you could put some journaling in there that would look really cool um, you could put whatever you want really Let's see. All right. So I guess let's just go with this one. It kind of lends itself to the paper better. I like the color of it better. Okay, so I'm going to put a mark there. And I'm going to put a mark right there. And then I'm just going to trim this one down. <laughs> All right. Let's see how it looks. You also want to make sure that it's not going to interfere with 
your things folding and it doesn't so you don't want to get too close to the score marks alrighty then we're just going to set this guy in there like that make sure it folds up and it does and then we can press it down and now just like that in just about a half an hour we have a lovely little gift that is a fun way to share some photographs. I hope that you enjoyed this album. I hope that you can make it. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. If you have any comments, feel free to send me an email. I enjoyed making this album and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Bye-bye now.